Hi and welcome back. Today we are talking about the crown chakra. So the crown chakra is located at the top of the head and it governs stability. It governs spirituality, connecting to the divine, much like the sixth chakra, the third eye chakra. chakra is out of balance, you might feel mental fog, depression, a lot of similar things that you would feel with the sixth chakra as well. When it's balanced, you feel intuitive, you feel connected to the divine, grounded, in control of your emotions, intuitive. Really you feel like you trust life. When you're connected to the divine, whatever that means to you, the universe, God, divine intelligence, nature, when you're connected to that, you trust life. You trust that things are going as they should be and you are at peace with it regardless of what it is. Now, I don't know about you. <laughs> But for me, that's one that I find the most rewarding when I work on it and the most challenging as well. Especially when there's so much uncertainty going on and I recommend don't watch the news at all or watch it once per day and that's it. However, if you're watching the news all the time that is a real counterintuitive activity if you want to keep your seventh chakra clear because it's such negative information a lot of its misinformation a lot of its repetitive information we talk a lot about mantras and beige mantras for every single one of the chakras well the news with its constant repeating of the same stories negative stories over and over and over again is it is it similar to a mantra all that's doing is just that repetition is going into your brain so I recommend shutting off the news <laughs> and really trying to do things do it once a day don't put your head in the sand so what's really important about the crown chakra is that it actually helps all of the other six chakras stay open if I think about, think about the root chakra is at the base and the crown's at the top. If, we're, if this is like a tree, the root is the roots of the tree and everything else is the trunk, whereas the crown, that's, those are the leaves, those are the blossoms, those are the blooms, that's everything just reaching out to, to open up and open itself up. So having a spiritual practice automatically helps keep the spiritual chakra open. Being mindful and being open to other people's beliefs is very important as well to keeping that seventh chakra open, whether they believe in something or not. That rigidity is not helpful for your chakra. So if somebody has different beliefs than you are, than you do, it's important that you understand and are okay with that to really keep your seventh chakra open and spinning. Different strokes for different folks. We all have different ways to meet and connect with the divine. And what we all have in common though is chakras. And we can use the knowledge and the information to make sure that these energy centers are running at optimum efficiency so that we can carry on with our lives to the best of our abilities. So, that's the seven chakra in that shell. Now we come to the crown chakra located just above the top of the head. The color associated with the crown chakra is violet. And the seed beige mantra can be om or some say none at all. You can sit in silence and focus on the crown chakra in meditation. Symptoms of deficiency may include feeling disconnected spiritually. 
which also leads to feeling disconnected to others. Lack of direction in life, aimlessness, not sure which path to take. Worried about the future, constant drama in your life, lack of peace in your home, at work, and inner peace as well. Signs of an overactive crown chakra include dizziness, mental fog, similar to the third eye chakra, headaches, lack of connection to a higher power. For those who believe in a higher power, this can be a very, very, very huge block. And for those who don't, Heal and balance the crown chakra. Take a break from screens. Sit in silence. Do a electronics detox. Sit in meditation. Wearing the color violet or purple colored items. Again, color therapy for all the chakras is an effective way to open up. Visualizing the color violet above your crown chakra. You can do this sitting or lying down. And you can actually go up and visualize each of the chakras all the way up. Essential oils for the crown chakra include sandalwood, rose, frankincense, and cedar wood. And now we'll get on to kundalini, which is an extremely important component of activating the chakras. I won't go into it too much, but I want to give you just enough information so that you have an idea of what kundalini is and what you're actually activating and how powerful it can be once you really get into strengthening your chakras on a regular basis. Thanks again and let's get on to Kundalini. Let's talk a little bit about Kundalini. Kundalini is often referred to as a snake because of the way it coils at the root chakra and when it is activated it weaves its way through the chakras in a snake-like pattern. Kundalini is often used as a name for the Indian goddess Durga. It is a symbolic term that is often associated with other goddesses as well, including Shakti. Kundalini can be understood best as a spiritual experience and it is not something that should be activated on your own. With proper training, it can help further open the chakras. However, experiences can be intense and some teachers believe Kundalini is not a force to mess with but rather be aware of its power and respect it. It has been known to cause psychosis in people and create powerful shifts that are very intense and hard to deal with. Others believe that you should invite Kundalini into your practice, but not try to wake it up or summon it. Now for a little bit on Kundalini. So according to Anadea Judith, who talks about Kundalini, Kundalini is an archetypal element, needs to be experienced symbolically. And if you look at, if you think about, let's think about the chakras and the way they're lined up. Kundalini is a life force that weaves its way around each of the chakras. So she's often called a serpent or a snake. Now I know snakes often get a negative connotation and they're often associated with evil, but in this, as, in this instance, it's not. It's just simply how, because of the way that the kundalini works its way around the chakras. Now, kundalini is not something, again, that can be summoned or controlled according to the books that I've read on Kundalini. What Kundalini is something that is to be respected 
And the more that you align and work with strengthening, opening, and clearing your chakras through yoga, meditation, proper eating, diet, the essential oils, everything that we've been discussing in this whole yoga series opens the opportunity for this visit from the kundalini energy to come and work in your life. So it's not a force that should be harnessed or used for, for bad or can be controlled, but it's something that is an experience that some people have and other people don't and doesn't necessarily happen all the time. I know that's very abstract in the explanation, but that's why Kundalini can, can and should be understood symbolically and as an archetype. But it is something to be aware of in terms of chakras, the history of chakras, and the, the belief system of the chakras. It's that Kundalini energy which resides within all of us and is activated through the care and maintaining of the chakras. I like, I really like how Anadea Judith, and I'll put a quote after this about it, I like how she explains Kundalini. And again, it might be different from anything that you've read about it, but Kundalini as an archetype is a very powerful way to enhance your chakra strengthening and energizing practices. So it really can help. We all need archetypes. I mean, archetypes are just all around us. They're infused in our society, in film and literature, and even in psychology. So it makes sense on an intellectual level to have an archetype and to have this sense of greater, of something greater in addition to the chakras. All of these chakra tips and techniques can be used without this kundalini archetype, but I just thought I would share it because kundalini is a part, it is an aspect of it, and it is an element, and it is something to be aware of. Thanks for watching this series on the chakras. I'm so excited to share this with you and have this compilation of tips, practices, and other information about the chakras, and including a little bit on the kundalini. Please click subscribe if you haven't. I really enjoy my subscribers. Please comment. Please let me know what you thought. And if you'd like to hear more about kundalini, let me know. I did just touch on it briefly. So I'd love to know if you'd like a little bit more detail on kundalini. Um, let me know if you'd like to see some more videos on the chakras because I'm happy to put some more information about the chakras up before I move on to our next topic. I love reading your comments. I reply to everybody's comments. Again, thank you for watching. Be safe, be well, and until next time, have a great day.